Listen to this parable here. It was out of excitement that he came out of the house from his master that he met his brother outside. Few minutes after being uh, uh, forgiven, he meets his brother.
Let me welcome each one of you here today. Um, that is day. And I want to thank you because of the weather. I didn't expect to have such a big crowd here today. It's a good excuse to say it was snowy. <laughs> That's why I didn't go to church. But I want to say thank you so much for choosing still to come here to worship your Lord. Uh, I want to thank my wife, um, my kids. And at times it's uh, possible that uh, somebody who is not a musician can be a uh, musicians. Uh, yeah, I can, I'm proud of you girls. Um, that's my only son I have. I want to thank you so much um, for your song. Uh, I don't sing, but when some people are singing to me, it is a very big blessing. Amen. And I, I listen. Everything. I listen. Everything. Maybe more than I listen to to sermons. So it was a blessing to me. Um, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we are here because of you. We had all the excuses to make because of what is happening outside. But each one of us has chosen to be here. And we do not want, to, Lord, to drive home without your blessings. May you be with us and be with each one of us. And be with me as well as I share this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let me also mention our guests. It has been probably a year without seeing you here. Amen. But this is your church. <laughs> Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is Malawi. Yeah, I, because that was Nyasaland, you know, Federation of Rhodesia Nyasaland. This is what we know. Those demarcations were made by Europeans. But we are one. After all, they speak my, my language as well. I speak uh, um, a similar language. So we are we're just the same. I want to speak on Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21. A very familiar parable. Matthew 18 verse 21 to 35. Verse 21. It say, in this Bible they say the parable of the unforgiving servant. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times. But seventy seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts for his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him 
and forgave him the debt. But when the same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his servant, his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I'll pay, I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that he had that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you, uh, should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as he had mercy on you? And the anger and in anger, his master delivered him to the jailer until he should pay all the debt. So also, my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Well, This is interesting. This is a, a parable which Jesus likens it with the kingdom of God. In this parable, it was in answer of the question of Peter. How many times should I forgive someone who has sinned against me? And he gave an answer to say, seven times? Would that be enough? Because in those days, the rabbis, they had pre put three as a maximum time where you can forgive. If you forgive the first time, the, first, the second time, the third one, that's it. You are done. So Peter decided to go a little further. Maybe seven as a perfect number. He thought that was the maximum probably where Jesus would have said, ah, that's right, at least seven times, not three. To, to, to his surprise, Jesus says, not seven times, but seven times times 70, which is, according to mathematics, 490 times. Why is so big a number from three? It is a number which is impossible for somebody to sin against you 490 times a day. It is impossible. So I was trying to say, you can forgive as much as you can. There's no limitation of forgiveness. And he gives a parable. In this parable, he says, the master had two servants. And the other one owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents, a talent was a maximum number, the biggest number figure we can say. I'll not go much on that one. But it was like a bill. In Malawi, we have the biggest bill, not, which is 2,000. That's it. You don't have 5,000 paper bill. We don't have those. So a talent... People say 10,000, if you convert it, 
It was just like an amount where you can work if it was at work for 20 years to get a 10,000. 20 years working. That 20 years, that means you are paid 10,000 in 20 years. Undeductible. What do I mean? It means you just receive that money without paying any bills. No tax. You buy nothing from it. You just pay it back. So this guy owed his master 10,000 talents. Which means he could work for 20 years just receiving his salary and giving it back to the master. A wage for 20 years. Just an estimate. But this guy says, when he was called by the master, and he says, ah, give me time so that I can pay you back. And here, they use the word, and he fell in his knees. And the Bible says, and he pleaded. If you read on the original language, it simply means he was continuously pleading before his master, repeating the same word, have mercy on me, be patient with me, sir. Be patient with me. Give me time and I'll pay you back. If you can read the story, it says the master was moved by compassion. And the master says, okay, because you have pleaded so much, I'm just canceling the entire debt. You don't have to pay me. Please go without paying anything. Don't pay me now and don't pay me in future. You are forgiven. And this guy whom the master has forgiven that he might not pay back 10,000 talents which he could have only paid after working for 20, for 20 years. He has been forgiven. I don't know how happy he was. I believe he was so happy. Very excited. He never expected that. Because the payment of failing to pay back was to be for him to be sold, his wife must be sold, his kids must be sold, and his everything must be sold. Just to pay back that much. It was an amount that he couldn't pay, even if he was given time. After all, he had all the time to pay back. He failed, not even a certain percentage, to pay back to his master. But he is appealing for another time. I don't know how, how long he wanted to, to, to be given to him so that he can pay back. But most commentators say this amount was unpayable. He couldn't make it, even if he was given time to pay back. Now this guy decides to go out because he has been freed. Very excited, very happy, and he just goes outside and he meets his friend again. And his friends, his friend has hundred denarii. Most people say it was an amount that he could receive after working for about three months. Then you get that amount of, of money. That was the amount that his fellow servant owed him. And he says, ah, <laughs> I met you. That's good. Pay back my money. Please, I need my money. And his friends does the very same thing he did just a few minutes ago when he was called by the master. And his friend said, please have patience with me. Give me time 
and I'll pay you back. As if he knew what his friend said to the master. He said the very same words to him. And he says, no. In short, he grabs him, and the Bible says, by his neck, and he chokes him. And he puts him in, in jail. Um, let's just compare an amount which you can, or you can have after working for three months. You are done. You can pay back that one. And the amount that you can work for 20 years This guy, to many people who held, they thought he could do the same thing that the master did to him, to his friend. But he didn't do it. Uh, uh, I've been thinking so much on this parable. What was in his head? Because just a few minutes after, and he was so excited, he didn't even forget what the master has done to him. But he finds a friend with very little money that he owed him. He grabs him, and he puts his friend in jail. I like Chichewa version. The pastor preached some few weeks ago. He said, Chichewa is another rich language. You read in, in Chichewa. They say, This Chichewa kunkanyanga. <laughs> kunkanyanga is grabbing like this. You know how you grab the neck? You grab like this and you do like this. You put these fingers together. You, you, you do like this. And not just that, that, but you do like this, you know. You, you, that's choking. Kunkanyanga is too. <laughs> Very interesting. Verse 25. It tells us that the man had no money to pay. No money. If he was serious to pay back the money, at least he could have had something in his hand to say, maybe you have maybe 100 talents. You can have 100. I will pay the other when you give me time. But he didn't have the money. So the Lord ordered him, his wife and kids, to be placed in prison. You know, when you are put in prison, you can't work and you can't pay back. But why did Jesus give the 10,000 talents as an amount that he owed his master? It represents the debt that you cannot pay back no matter what happens. Because you may not even work for 20 years. You can't even work maybe for 20 years. You work for five years, you are done. And you can even die. And he says, even if we were to suffer, you know, if you, if you have 10,000 and you can't even pay back, what he could have said to the master was, Master, I can't pay back that much. That was a reasonable response he could have given. To be realistic that I, can, I can't pay this amount is too much for me. I was just asking myself, what did he take from his master that added up to 10,000 talents? Gongolian Tundwans. Nobody knows. But the fact is, it was unpayable. What does it represent? 
The master represents our God. The two servants are you and me. What does 10,000 talents represent? It represents the sins that you do and I do. That we owe to our God. The sins that we sin against God and the sins that we sin against each other there are 10,000 talents we can't pay. That's why I like that song which people say and he paid it all on the cross. You and me no matter how, no matter what we can do, there is no amount which can redeem us from the sins that we have committed. Amen. After all, in the year 2019, most of us who have sinned against God that we couldn't even pay back. We couldn't. When this guy was called to the master, he pleaded. I'm a good listener, especially when it comes to church. I'm a very good listener. I listen to how people pray, especially when they come up front here to pray for the congregation. Even when I meet some people and we pray together. Normally, the word forgive comes in readily. The word forgive. It is either forgive us or forgive us. Forgive me. A good prayer must within three, four statements before you go into the prayer, the word forgive comes out. Amen. And most of the times when people, when you mention the word forgive us all our sins, the congregation will, will respond to you. To say, um, oh yeah, amen, amen. Because of what? Which means each and everybody has sinned and it is relevant at that moment to ask for forgiveness from God. Amen. Let me ask this question. How many of you have been hurt by someone in 2019? Just 2019. I believe it's everybody. If we can tell stories, I can tell you stories that other people have hurt me personally. But at the same time, you can't claim yourself that you have never disappointed somebody else in 2019. You can't claim that. And you can't claim that you have never hurt somebody and somebody is aching right now because of you. Maybe you know or you don't know. But it's a real fact that we have to accept. That is unpayable before God. There's no amount even if you can work for 20 years. You can't pay back that one. If it was possible, people like Donald Trump would have been the righteous people in the world. Because they have got money. They can simply buy before God. But they can't pay. That can only be paid. By the blood of the Lamb. When this guy failed. To say anything. The master was moved. By compassion. In this version he says. Was pity. It was out of compassion that this guy was freed from his debt. It was cancelled. And you can see that he completely did nothing, nothing special that was done for his debt to be cancelled. Completely nothing but pleading. And I believe today, I listened to the prayer today, the intercessory prayer. 
He said, God forgive us our sins today. Listen to me and trust it. When he just said that, the master in heaven has forgiven each one of us here. Amen. Believe you me. Amen. For the Bible tells me, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, even if your sins are red as scarlet, they will be clean like what? Like snow. It is here when we understand what snow means. You will be as white as snow. The moment you say, God, forgive me. He is moved by compassion because he knows. Amen. You can't pay it back no matter he gives you how many time, how many years for you to work on your righteousness. Amen. You can't come that way. Amen. He knows that. He has forgiven us. Listen to this parable here. It was out of excitement that he came out of the house from his master that he met his brother outside. Few minutes after being uh, uh, forgiven, he meets his brother. Let me say this way. You have been forgiven. Amen. Soon and very soon, we will go out. And you will meet the same people who have had your heart. For the rest of 2019, you have not been so happy because of your brother, because of your sister who has hurt you. But remember, you have been forgiven. Amen. Don't forget that your debt has been canceled. Amen. When you meet your sister outside, when you meet your brother outside, before you say anything, remember what God has done for you. Amen. That's why I entitled my sermon. Because he has done it for me. I was listening to... I, I listen on YouTube. Uh, I watch YouTube most of the times. So I was looking at uh, what happened in Rwanda. In Rwanda... There was genocide. You know that is a, a familiar story. It's the other tribe killing the other tribe. Killing. And so many people lost their lives. So many people. I wanted to put just one testimony given on YouTube. But I will not do that because of time. But what I saw or I see in Rwanda is the spirit of forgiveness that is in Rwanda right now. Amen. By the people who were tortured and punished and killed. The worst thing somebody can do for you is to kill. The worst thing that somebody can do, you can do for somebody, is to kill. That is the worst. Ah, kutukwa na, ah, you can, because of pirira. But killing, no. But what did the president of that country say? He asked for forgiveness. Amen. And truly, people forgave each other in Rwanda. Amen. Go and see what is happening in Rwanda today. You can't even know there's no trace of genocide in Rwanda. The economy is just flourishing. I believe God is blessing them Amen. because of their spirit of forgiveness. Amen. If the Rwandans can do that, why can't I forgive someone who just assassinated my name? Just assassinated my name. It is just a hundred denarius. 
an amount or a wage that I can get after working at Dungarvan for three months. Hey, <laughs> I, 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 okay, listen. When you forgive, that is the true godly trait that you can show to the world. Amen. Forgiveness is wonderful, I tell you. Uh, I saw how people respected this guy called Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela is one of the popular big names in the world. Why? Nelson Mandela was put in prison for 27 years. When he came out, he met those people who jailed him and put him in prison for 27 years. And he forgives them. Amen. And the world says, oh, here we have a great leader, Nelson Mandela. We have a great leader, Nelson Mandela. That is in South Africa. That is in this world. Let me tell you. Let me remind you. If you portray the spirit of forgiveness, you will be great. Not in South Africa or in Berrien Springs or in Naos or in the United States of America. You will be great in the kingdom of God. Amen. So this guy, and, and, and some people were seeing, they saw what he did to his friend. And they ran to the master. They said, Master, do you know what is happening outside? That guy whom we are forgiven, he just grabbed his friend, and his friend is right now in jail. And then the master says, what? Bring him back here. Bring him back here. And the Bible says, he was not only put in jail, but he was handed over to the torturers. The torturers, other Bible say, tormentors, to torment him. This guy was put in jail not because of the 10,000 talents, no, but because he didn't forgive his friend as he was forgiven by the master. Let me read this one, which was read. Uh, by Cynthia. Cynthia is my favorite, um, is my favorite kid. That's why I told her to read today. I first saw Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4. I just want you, if you can go back home, go and read it again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted. Amen. No, you can't do that, amen. It's so, I mean, let me read it again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another. I need an amen. Come on. Come on, guys. This is sweet. Be kind to one another. Okay, listen. And it says what? Tender-hearted. Listen. Forgiving one another. As, as God in Christ forgave you. So the equation here is because I have been forgiven, I must forgive my fellow servant. Forgiving, there's no condition in forgiving. You forgive, even if no one comes to you asking for forgiveness, you forgive. Christ on the cross, when he was suffering on the cross, other people had nailed him on the cross. He was still on the cross. And, and what did he say? Lord, forgive them. For they do not know what they are, what they are doing. Amen. He was still in pain. He was still on the cross. But he says, forgive them. Forgive them. Because forgiveness does not only come when somebody comes to you and he pleads for you. You forgive. 
even if somebody doesn't even think to come to you to say, I'm sorry, you forgive. Jesus said those words. Some people say, no, because it was Jesus. Stephen, Stephen, on Acts chapter 7, verse 60, uh, when people were actually stoning him, do you know a stone? Do you know a stone? In America here, maybe we don't see the stones very much. But do you know this stone? Has anybody thrown a stone against you and hit you? Maybe you have not experienced that. I have. We used to stone each other back home when we were young. A stone, when somebody throws a stone and it hits you, let me tell you, you can't forget in your life. And you will never forget. Stephen, other people were actually stoning him. Not because they didn't know. They knew what they were doing. But they deliberately they chose to stone him. And while they were stoning him, Stephen said, don't hold them such a sin. Forgive them. He was actually dying. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thing that we can do here at Malawi Michiana Church that God will see that we are serious to be in his kingdom is to forgive Amen. one another. When I was reading the story, this parable, I was asking myself a question, trying to find out who did I sin against? And who has sinned against me? I had a list of people who have sinned against me up to this day. I said to myself, before I stand on the pulpit, God forgive me. Amen. And I've forgiven all my brothers and sisters who have sinned against me. Amen. And obviously, my Lord who is faithful has set me free. Amen. And I'm excited today to say I have been forgiven. But what am I doing after God has forgiven me? Most, in most cases, we refrain from those people. You don't want to be associated with those people. You go somewhere else. No, I'm avoiding. But here, it's not the issue of avoiding. That's why Jesus said, What? If you are going to church to Niles to worship and you want to put something on the altar and you remember before you go to church, maybe you are somewhere, somewhere you are driving and you remember you have a brother or a sister who has something against you. What did he say? Put it down. Go back to your brother and reconcile to your brother. And then after reconciliation, you can go back to church and give worship to your Lord and Savior. We have made a meaningful worship here because even if we know that somebody is against me or I have something against somebody, we continue our journey to church. We still come here and worship. It is a serious business to forgive my friend. Amen. And it is my responsibility. It's a choice to, give the, to go that route. May God help us to truly forgive. Look at what you have done for God and what God has done for you. I want to pray a very short prayer, but for only those who say, to be honest, somebody sinned against me or I have sinned against somebody, but I have not forgiven fully as God has forgiven me fully. But I want to do it before I go home. May I ask you to stand up? Thank you. I'll not talk too long. I don't have to plead with you. You know what you did with your God and your, 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 your fellow servants. May the Lord forgive us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, 
we want to thank you for this parable. We want to thank you for your word. You know me, and you know everybody who has stood up. You know the people that we have hurt. And you know the people that are suffering because of us. But we thank you, Lord, that you are willing to forgive us. As we come before you, we continuously plead, not that you give us time, but you may blot us our sins and make us clean. Father, help us to exercise the forgiving spirit to everyone who has something against us or we have something against them. We can't hide anything from you. It is hard to forgive. But by your grace, we can. We want to go home freed and to free our friends. In Jesus' name, amen.